Hey, good people. As always, thanks for hitting that play button. Be sure to share this with your friends. Give us a rating if you haven't. And if you're new here, give us a subscribe if you like us. And, of course, interact with us on social media at Coming Clean Pod. It's episode 57. Let's do this. Hi, this is Alex M. And this is Morgan S. And you're listening to Coming Clean Podcast with Sam and Marty. Can he get down like this? This is the Coming, Coming Clean. Clean Podcast. With Sam, Sam and Marty. And Marty. Welcome, this is the number one podcast at MTV's Laguna Beach, The Hills, and Siesta Key. It's the Coming Clean Podcast. It's Friday, so you know we're talking about MTV's iconic show, The Hills. I am your host. You know me best as the bro that runs the show. My ma- my name, my name is Marty, and with me as always... He's a big boy. Is the man with no plan? It is Sam. Uh, well, that's a good uh, metaphor for our podcast. Not really many plans on this one, but <laughs> wheeling, dealing, and freestyling, <laughs> free stealing. Yeah, well, it's Friday, so it's all about the hills today, and let's kick it off with some headlines. The hills headlines. All right, big news. We don't usually plug other podcasts on this show because, you know, we we want to keep the good people to be comers and coming back, but no free ads other than at the end. Yes, but you know what? We we got to got to support the the Hills fam and hashtag make Spidey famous again. And Spencer and Heidi, new podcast. Have you listened to it yet? I have not. Um, it might make my rotation, but sometimes, you know, I can't I can't give listens to somebody yet. <laughs> well, the, I believe they just dropped the first episode, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Spencer's ever popular Cosmo recaps of Siesta Key are going to move over to that podcast. So I feel bad for that writer. He was like, man, I got I got to set up article every week. It's going to yeah. be sick. And Spencer's smart, you know. Mm-hmm. Why why give money to views to somebody else when you can make them on your own? Exactly. The Spidey brand is going to be back better than ever. I'm actually pretty excited about it. So go check I mean, them out. Basically, the, yeah, they're the only ones that are like doing anything these days in terms of like social, like big social media. Yeah, or like, I mean, like more or less like doing... relevancy. Like people are talking about them. Yeah, everyone's kind of kind of just doing like lifestyle blogs and stuff, but yeah, you know the Spidey brand don't do that. The Spidey brand is all about the fame, is all about the relevance, it's all about the Spidey. So once again, make Spidey famous again. Go check out their podcast. Uh, prob- pretty sure wherever you can get your podcasts. Uh, anything else from the cast? We are closing in on. Are we closing? In? Yeah, we're closing in. Are we gonna celebrate Elsie's birthday uh, next week? depending on when her birthday was february 1st yes we will well we will not be doing the episode well this will we will not be recording it will we record the episode oh well it'll drop for some people it'll drop for the uh anyone not in the east coast it's gonna drop on her birthday uh but it drops on the second but we'll we'll talk about elsie elsie's birthday next week then I thought I thought it was going to be perfect timing, but there's 31 days in January, <laughs> so we'll, we'll talk about her later. Anything else from the cast? Any news that we missed? Uh, no, I don't. I think that's it. That, I mean, I nothing's popped up on my radar. I haven't seen anything on Twitter or anything like that um, without doing an in-depth search. But I think everybody, yeah, everybody's just going on their merry ways. All right, well, um, just a reminder again: we have merch. So if you want t-shirts, sweatshirts, tank tops workout clothes, um, mugs, stickers, whatever you want, 
go and check out Coming Clean Podcast merch if you have suggestions for designs or if you're a designer who wants to contribute a design to our merch store, let us know at Coming Clean Pod. You can find us at teespring.com slash stores slash Coming Clean Pod. And now to the heart of the episode. It's season two, episode 10 of The Hills. What is this one called? It is called uh, Apology Not Accepted. And let's talk about the highlights. The Hills Highlights. All right, so a little bit of a format change, you know, just to spice things up. We've been doing this for 57 episodes, um, sort of just taking a little cue from our Siesta pod where it's mostly just take after take. Uh, We're going to switch this up. We are still obviously going to talk about the episode, but we're going to answer some questions. Maybe this will, maybe we'll agree. Maybe we'll disagree. We'll see what happens. Um, So first of all, um, we open up the show with Heidi finally telling Elsie, what is this? Like, Oh no, that was new year. A month later that she is. Yeah. (laughs) Spencer asked her to move in with her. Um, so that could be editing because like she went to eat with Lo at some point. So, right. but I mean, we're assuming <coughs> right after New Year's, Lo was still there the day after. So she maybe did it then. Yeah, because Elsie asked, uh, Elsie called out Heidi for telling Lo first. So, but uh, yeah, uh, essentially, uh, they their friendship seems to be a little better now. Um, and Heidi surprisingly decides to stay uh, with LC. Uh, so, w- was that a good idea? Should she have stayed, or she sure should she sure 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 should she have just gone and um, gone out with Spencer instead? Uh, I think she should have stayed because we kind of we kind of went over this last week about was how the lease not up. Did you find lease information from them? Yeah, uh, I did not look into the lease, <laughs> but. I think in terms of, so this, I think she should have stayed. However, Elsie kind of was like, I feel like she put a little too much hate on Heidi. Like Mm -hmm. not, she, the way she sounded was like, what are you crazy to even do that? Like that makes no sense where. Because they're only a couple months in was her reason. Exactly. I think that same way. Like I agree with Elsie, but I also don't agree with how she went about like kind of like you can't accuse somebody or you can't you know interject like what you feel you can give your opinion but she didn't really say it in like opinion view she was kind of like it's like demanded judgy. it on her yeah judgy so like clearly Heidi probably felt judged and was like all right yeah I'm gonna stay with you thinking that was like the safe bet in the situation when she probably really does want to she's already she told Spencer she wanted to move in right um, so I'm going to disagree with you and say that she should have just left um, for both of their sakes. Uh, I agree with you and that Elsie is still sort of continuing that path. Again, I think it's sort of the control thing where even when she finally gets her way and gets Heidi to, Heidi to stay, she want, I feel like she's just trying to make it feel like, oh, I, I was the one who convinced her to stay even though it was like after the fact when Heidi already said she was going to stay. But I think it's not a good idea for her to stay because, one, it's delaying the inevitable. Two, yeah. Yeah, you've been going – they've been going through like fights on and off over one person. Right. And it's just going to happen again anyways. Yeah. Um, second, you're just opening it up for – so the difference is, I think, if you're living together – you notice when the person's gone more. So Elsie's going to feel abandoned a lot more as opposed to if Heidi moves in with Spencer, the initial, you know, bad feelings will happen. I think they would have gotten over it. But yeah. then the feeling of hanging out with Heidi every once in a while will feel much better than just seeing her constantly leave. So I think just the psychology of that is why mm-hmm. I would have left and uh, to save the friendship really. And, uh, we we can fast forward a couple of seasons, but I think this is the reason why the uh, the friendship sort of went downhill. Yeah, or if um, <clears throat> Elsie like if Elsie was like a mastermind, right? right? She could have been like, "All right, fine, Heidi, go." Mm-hmm. And if she knows Spencer, like if Spencer is truly who he is, that she thought in her mind, 
Spencer would have like messed up the relationship. Right. Heidi would have came. Come come, back. She would have not. I don't want to say crawling back, but right. she would have probably came back mm-hmm. into her. Like you gotta let her go. What what is the what's the term? Let them flee and then they'll come back. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, like whatever you lose makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, or you gotta sometimes absence you gotta set makes them. the heart grow fonder. Yeah, or like sometimes you gotta set them free and they'll and then they'll come back. <laughs> I just know, like, the worst, very, like, fine go, and then I know you're going to come back with your tail between your legs. That's the other one. Um, More or less that. Metaphors aside. But, yeah, it's just, yeah, you're right, because, oh, that would have been such a crazy move if in the back of her room, yeah, go. Just call, yeah, just called her. Because she, yeah, because she knows that this is only a couple months into the relationship, and... Yeah, if anything, she LC made the relationship stronger because you know they still would have had to just go through the basics of getting to know each other even more. Ooh, ooh, that could I think messy. Spencer and Heidi should send yeah. LC it. Fruit basket. Uh, she, they should, yeah, fruit basket. Edible like arrangement. Every week. Yeah, every week. <laughs> be like, oh. thanks, we're still together. Like every anniversary, be like, right. appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, uh, a, l- a little in the middle here, whether it was a good idea or a bad idea. We'll see how this unfolds. Um, but sort of related to this, uh, we are already seeing the bumps in the relationship with Elsie and Heidi. And Heidi, I mean, God bless her. She, I think she's a little, a, uh, not a little, but a lot more optimistic in their f- the, the strength of their friendship than I am. Elsie. Because, yeah, oh. or even Elsie is. <laughs> Because she yeah, uses like, the drama to <laughs> pull, pull a prank. That's I. I would say that's pretty self aware of Heidi to be like, yeah. I know Elsie's gonna get like annoyed by this and right. it's gonna make a better surprise and like, I'm gonna go hang out with Spencer, right? So and it's gonna annoy the hell up. So the hell would out. you have done if you were Heidi? Would you have done the plan or would you have done oh, something else? Oh hell no! Else? Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what, that, like. It's cra- like you're opening yourself up mm-hmm. for disaster. You don't know what else. Like Elsie right. already kind of did it when she was like, yeah. I don't know, like emergency, like she's got to go. And yeah. then Elsie knew she wanted to like, get a fight. Right. And then Heidi just like departed and Elsie yeah. was like ready to <clears throat> say something. Yeah. Terrible idea. Yeah, she could have so she could have healed off and like just said whatever she wanted or what's right. on top of her head. Yeah. And it could have gone really bad. Yep. I, I agree, uh, especially because you, you don't know Heidi, because obviously they're good friends, so LC would know what buttons to push on Heidi. Mm-hmm. So even though if you're going in there with the best intentions like Heidi is, LC so- says something that ticks her off, uh, then it's well, the, the birthday's over and you're sitting there drinking for <laughs> just once. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, whew, risky plan. I'm glad they pulled it off. You, and now you wouldn't do this as well, right? No. I'm too, I'm too scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have just gone regular birthday party. Or, and like there been a, there's a free sandwich at this place. Right. Or like, yo, let's go to like this place for dinner and then just have everyone there already. It's like could have been a lot simpler without hurting any feelings, but hey, they live in the drama. And um as people will find out or as already people know we are team drama <laughs> <laughs> our loyalty is with drama so for uh yeah. people saying that we're doing some things with this things of some cast members on any show it's not uh, our loyalty Step off. yeah it's our loyalty is not with the characters our loyalty is with the yeah. drama because <laughs> without the drama, there would be no coming between podcasts. Oh my god! If, if yeah, if there was no drama, <laughs> we'd just be us talking about people's lives, yeah. which would be sad. <laughs> um, all right. So speaking of drama, we get to the party and Brody's there, and I'm glad. I'm glad he's back. I missed him. Yeah. Oh, actually, before that, let me just say, shout out to Spencer, who not only was on his best behavior, but was really, really trying hard and was a pleasant guy. All smiles didn't seem sincere no. enough for someone who doesn't like someone else. You, he obviously it was like pulling teeth for him, I'm sure, but he yeah. pulled it off for the love of Heidi. And he had a wonderful speech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once again, self-aware, being like, 
this is the love of my life. Yep. She loves you. Mm-hmm. We don't get along, mm-hmm. but it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, he did throw like an I love you at her, which right. Right, yeah. that's too much. <laughs> yeah. But still, it's like throwing that out, making the idea that he understands the whole situation and mm-hmm. it is what it is. Yep. So I'm going to be he's on his best behavior that evening. Right. And it was like the olive branch. It's like, I know we don't like each other, but I'm making this effort. So hopefully you get the message that you should also be oh, making but, the effort. Yeah. So, yeah, shout out to Spencer there. Um, the ball's in Elsie's court. Yes. She kind of has to give, like, Spencer a break mm-hmm. for, like, a little bit. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, so, yeah. Um, but they did invite Brody to this thing, so that was interesting. What's a bromance? <laughs> yeah. So, Brody is there, and, you know, things kick off. It started off a little awkward with Elsie. And, yeah, but it was some late flirting. Like, oh, yeah. what are you doing here? Oh, and, it's somebody's and, birthday? Oh, right. classic. Yeah. classic. <sighs> so Brody is just uh, a really good talker, and which leads us to the question, is, is, why is he getting a second chance here? Did he just talk his way into it, or is Elsie, does she really like him? What's going on here? <sighs> it's, it's a tough situation, because usually you want to put it on you want to put it on both parties, right? Right. You want to put it on Brody because he knows he was in a semi seeing somebody. I don't know if they were official. So maybe it was, it was like both of them had an understanding. Like, I guess it must have been, they both had an understanding that like they're not official. They're just a couple dates or whatever. Right. Um, and it seems like LC knows it, this like Jen one, it's tough on friends when you're hook up with somebody like, you know that there's a, some bounds or somebody had rules set in place, at least in their mind, mm-hmm. maybe not in the relationship with that friend, but at least there's some kind of code that everybody kind of adheres to. Right. So that kind of, I think she focused all on Jen, whereas like Brody would, is got put in a certain situation that he would have never been in to begin with potentially. Yeah. I just don't get why, she is and we've talked about this before so the gravity of the situation is that jen obviously is worse because she's her best friend but yeah. also brody knows that they're best friends and he still pursues jen bunny so i just don't know why she easily just sort of dropped any sort of issue with brody and is like cool with him already and joking about the situation so uh it's a it's a little bit misplaced it's uh it's a common theme for LC that she does not get mad at the boys. She didn't. She was mad at Kristen when should have she should mm-hmm. have been mad at Steven. She was mad at Jason when she should have been mad at, or she was mad. She wasn't mad at Jason. She was mad at everyone else except Jason. And now to a point, she eventually yeah. I think got upset yeah. with Jason. Yes. But he got he had a lot he had a lot of oh yeah a lot more um, than Jen Bunny who her supposed best friend yeah. Um, and which now, well, now I'm concerned is what, I mean, did they address it? Why they initially, when Elsie got in a fight with Lo, or they haven't addressed that. They just said she was the reason why yeah, prior. No, we okay. have not gotten to that yet. There was no explanation, but yeah, I, I was going to say, I understand why she wouldn't have been, I would understand, I understand why Steven got a second chance because in Laguna, because they were friends prior and they were yeah. best friends from childhood. And Kristen was sort of the one who was new in that situation. So understood there. Don't really understand the Jason thing because it's like kind of blatant and uh, just a pattern of bad behavior from him. Uh, and also this, don't understand this because, you know, she could have talked it out with Jen Bunny, but we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, uh, I, I, I don't, I think Brody's getting away with stuff. Here. I think it's just maybe like her thing, you know, it's like she, some people are attracted to a specific person. Like I think it's been brought, brought up, Bren, Ben brought up before, uh, that Elsie has a certain type of guy. Mm-hmm. In last episode, she had she always had a certain type of guy, so she's like trying to get away from it. And I think Brody fits in more of that Jason right. Steven type of guy vibe. Yeah, and I think. And it, oh, yeah, go ahead. It, it, I think it's just gonna be an, it's a ongoing pattern for her. 
Yeah, I think it goes back to sort of her need to control things. Uh, I think she found that she there's an opening to get control back of the relationship with Brody. Mm-hmm. And I think that just the the gravity of what she thought she had control with of her friendship with Jen Bunny, um, just, you know, it was the gravity of the situation was much more, which leads us to our last question. Uh, Jen Bunny apologizes, you know, the, misses the party, but goes to Elsie's place. Uh, and yeah, showing up at the door is wild. <laughs> yeah. And good thing they all had their mics on already. Um, but do you agree with, I'm not even going to go in because we're going to end up talking about whether you would have accepted the apology or not. But do you agree with Jen Bunny that the situation with Brody was being blown out of proportion? Because Elsie was in fight mode on this one. I don't think, uh, I don't think Elsie blew the ish, the whole Jen Bunny and Brody hooking up out of proportion at all. Mm-hmm. I think she was actually in the right for yep. being upset. Uh-huh. Um, one Jen is like this happened before. Whether right. yeah, Jen didn't the, think that, that was a big deal. Was crazy. Yeah, didn't think that was a big deal, or like she didn't really know semantics. But like, you can't hook up with somebody. Like, I don't know. It's just a little too weird, especially when it's like so new. Like, I right. could see like maybe a year later that like they didn't really have contact at all with each other, or they're like friends and they've kind of gotten past but like elsie seemed it seemed like elsie like hooked up with him like maybe two weeks ago mm-hmm. you know like was clearly into him and then yep. jen which maybe i mean a little coercing from spencer and heidi right. even though heidi's now playing like the saint role of trying to avoid jen <laughs> yeah which was a little suspect but i think i don't i don't blame elsie being for very mad at all i think jen deserved what she got for that yeah, I, I agree. And I think um, the difference is, yet yeah, we're, we're talking about self-awareness for Heidi and Spencer in this episode. Jen Bunny was lacking that because she was focused mm-hmm. on the the one thing. Because if it was just the Brody thing, the one night yep. thing, then sure, in a vacuum, that was blown out of proportion. But LC Did LC even that. say that? She's, she's, no, she's she like, said it doesn't matter no, just who gender. it was, okay. but the fact that you did that to your best friend is what she's upset about. Um, so I think that that's completely justified because that is really a, a shady move um, to do that and then sort of just disappear and or even just think that it was not a big deal. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can't you can't be hooking up with people, especially when you're best friends. That, that's like, ugh. No, yeah, it's not. It's ugh, yeah, it's it's not good. It never ends well. Yeah. So yeah, for for the people who thought that I was gonna take Jen Bunny's side on this one, in your face. Not not today. <laughs> not today. She didn't <laughs> return my calls. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the the whole Jason situation was kind of crazy. I did not know that was a thing that was not brought up. I don't think. And I and I know and I think when I first watched it, like I never remembered it. Right, and they were, she Jen was part of like the gossip. Like, ooh, they're like hanging out by the pool. Yeah, okay. and I don't know. I have a little pet peeve okay. with these episodes. Is that like back in the day, I was like, oh, this like this. It's always filled with drama. Like every episode seemed like it was like drama, drama, drama. They leave the drama till the end, mm-hmm. and like nothing really well, happens like the last prior scene too. Yeah, and nothing like really happens prior. Yeah, like it, it's all lead up, and then even the drama wasn't even like. The fight with Jenna, I feel like it wasn't even that big of a deal. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just. I want to see some throwing some stuff or something. I think we're just being spoiled by that, the drama of Siesta Key. Drama of Siesta Key High. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's too much. We're, we're expecting um, we're expecting fireworks, and this is more like a, you know, a, a spark on a match. Yeah. It's still hot, but not explosive. Not, yeah, it's not, not real. Yeah, that. I walked myself out of that <laughs> metaphor, and it worked. I think <laughs> we're metaphor guys now. Yeah, we're, 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 we're guys of a lot of things. All right, anything else on this episode that we did not touch on? I have one thing. Uh, I have one. No. Thing. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Go on. I uh, mean, going back to the prank of Heidi yes. doing that stuff. 
Audrina was not help. Uh, I, I know Audrina was supposed to play along with it, but she's like, mm-hmm, three strikes and you're out. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, come on. Just drive to the place and yeah, just, just nod your head. <laughs> yep. Audrina, terrible, terrible surprise. She she was really, like, fanning the flames of that thing. But I was like, oh, chill. <laughs> I do. I do want to bring up that I kind of brought alluded to it that Heidi was like being holier than thou. But I loved how she was like at work calling her friends, and then oh, Jen yeah. shows up, and yeah. she's like, "I'm busy. I'm busy." Um, yes. What? Oh, what are you doing? I gotta get back to work. Yeah. She's like, yeah. And then Jen's like, "Oh, so you're busy now?" Like right. she's like, "Yep, doing things." Um, I can see her like move like a piece of paper around. Like, yeah. oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just like shuffling. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing <laughs> stuff. No, but yeah, that was funny because when the. F- when Jen was sort of explaining herself at the first pause, Heidi just goes, well, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. I was like, yeah, Heidi. That's that's me at work. Everybody's like, oh, how's it going? I'm like, mm, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> uh, Fake typing. She's just, you know, she's the, she's the one with the I'm getting out of work alarm every Five, 455 <laughs> yeah did she ever take that down probably I not i don't know uh heidi let us know at coming clean pod but yeah that was that was pretty good and yeah i i think again heidi is a little more optimistic about this friendship than lc lc i think is just happy that it's a little bit more normal now but yeah when things start because yeah that's where the imbalance starts because lc thinks it's back to normal ish heidi feels like she's stretching yeah, I think if Heidi's starting to feel very anxious about the situation, yeah. um, and you can clearly like her confidence in the when they were first discussing it, it her confidence isn't there. She's not like fully committed. She's like not fully committed, even saying that like, oh, I'm, I'm going to stay here. Right. Um, she, I think it's just who her personality is that she just kind of gets maybe bullied, or they're kind of like yeah, more or less kind of bullying her into like staying. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens so far. It's a little bit calmer in the Heidi LC friendship. We'll see what happens next week. And before we go on, I want to tell you all again about the Coming Clean Podcast merch store, teespring.com slash stores slash Coming Clean Pod. Links are going to be in the description. But yeah, if you want to get yourself some t-shirts, some tank tops, some sweatshirts, some mugs, a- anything. If you want umbrellas, I think that can be an option. I can put it up on the store. But yeah, head on over there. They're uh, about like 20, 25 bucks each for the t-shirts. And, you know, you'll be helping us out a lot. Uh, we got servers to pay for. I need a new external hard drive. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, just to, you know, keep the content coming. And I know we're doing two shows a week now because of CS the Key. So, you know, we got we to gotta keep this train rolling. Back at it. All right. Link says it in the description. But now we got a crown an MVP. Clap your hands with me. It's the MVP, MVP. of the week. Say right up, yes. All right, who's going to be your MVP this week? So I'm going to take a a uh, page out of your book, mm-hmm. and I think I'm going to start doing MVPs of not like a nice person, but who brought drama? Yep, who brought the who brought the thunder? Yeah. And I think I'm going to go with Heidi this week. Ooh. Reasons? Uh, surprise party planner. Yep. Started going with emergencies with Spencer. Knew that was a sticking point. Mm-hmm. She took the risk. Mm-hmm. It paid off. And I just think she was funny when she dealt with Jen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm actually going to agree, and I'm going to give it to Heidi. Yeah. Like we've talked about earlier. Um yeah, but she she had a good episode both, you know, in attitude and in the drama that she potentially could have brought. So, yeah. Big ups to Heidi. Big week for Heidi. Um so congrats. And now uh now for not so good awards. Jabroni, J A B R O N I X Y Z A B C Oh, it doesn't matter how you spell Jabroni. <laughs> Okay, you can keep saying that and make yourself think you're a, a good person, but you're a I bad person. I mean, I didn't person. do anything wrong. All right, who are you flushing down the Jabron zone? I feel like we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, I'm flushing down Jen. There you go. Uh, same. Jabroni! Yeah, I think it was 
pretty obvious. Jabroni! Go yeah. ahead. Uh, it's just terrible apology. One, come with, like, a gift. Like, you did True. bad. Maybe come with a gift. True. Good call. Like a box of chocolates or something. something. Um, or a birthday coach bag. Gift. Oh, a birthday gift. You didn't even get her a birthday <laughs> gift. Great point. <laughs> Also, call before you arrive, although we don't know. If... How, how, eh, how'd she get let in? True. That's sketchy. True. It's a lot. It's a, I think it's a gated community. Mm-hmm. She just waited for the person to walk out and she like slipped she... right in. Oh, yeah. She put like a piece of paper in the door. <laughs> she was there. Take, take um, the door knob. She was there when they left for the party, just waiting in the bushes. <laughs> I, mean, I, who, yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I mean, she's a smart lady. Um, she's True. on to huge things now. So, uh, but yeah, for this week, sorry, Jen, buddy, you are in the Jabron zone. All right. Final thoughts on the episode before we move on. Uh, it was just, you know, it standard episode. Uh, I want, I want to see more drama, maybe season three or in these next couple episodes. But I think once we start getting into later on, I think this is when they start ramping it up. Maybe sunset LC ramp mm. up the drama. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure we're going to see more Adrena. Justin Bobby's probably going to come in the picture, but we'll take it week for week. And now, um, yeah, it also let us know if you prefer this, uh, format or if you want us to go back to the other one. I kind of like this one, uh, but you let us know at coming clean pod, but now we got to play some trivia. I think you need to step in front of Justin and put the Dukes on, dude. I think you should come out here, right here and come talk to me like that. It's trivia time. March 19th, 2007 is the day in history that we are talking about. I am up two points, 24 to 22, according to our script. Is it accurate? Who knows? If any of the comers <laughs> is taking score from historically, let us know because we should uh, count. And we would be very impressed. Yes. Uh, shout out. We might send you a t-shirt. Um, all right. Are you ready for the five questions of the show yeah yeah <laughs> all right what, what day what day are we doing this on march 19th 2007 perfect all right here we go specialty yes question number one. Oh, that is <laughs> nope <laughs> wrong one question number one with a name like this you'd expect the eagles to come out with a win with a win but it was the Oregon Ducks who won this game in the Battle of the Birds to kill any dreams of a Cinderella run and send their opponents back home to Rock Hill, South Carolina. What team was it? Was it the South Carolina Gamecocks? No. I said Eagles. It's the, well, yeah. it's the Winthrop Eagles. Who the hell know that? Because you, with a name like this, you'd expect them to come out with a win. Oh. <laughs> but they came out with an L, and so did you. So let's go straight to question number two. Woo, unintentional rhyme. <laughs> this now-retired women's professional wrestler turned 20 on this day. Back then, she was still a couple of years from Not It Up, the WWE. Nowadays, she's a best-selling author and is married to the longest reigning WWE champion of all time. Light it up. Why does that sound so familiar? Because it's her theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Retired, longest reigning. Who's married to who? Light it up. Oh, it's going <laughs> to bug the hell out of me. <laughs> you, this guy is relevant. He was also recently on MTV. Is it Maurice? Oh, you picked the wrong guy. Oh, it's CM Funk's wife, AJ. Oh, Lee. that's her. She was on MTV. No, he was on MTV. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would have also accepted uh, AJ Brooks or AJ Mendez Brooks. All right, question over two. Oof. I should have I, known that. That was a, that was a good theme song. I like that. Yeah, it was a good theme song. It's no Bree mode, or you can look, but you can't touch. But shout out to the Bella Twins. All right, question number three. Yes. The New York Knicks beat the Toronto Raptors ninety-two to seventy-four on this day. Chris Bosh may have scored twenty-one points, but it was this Knicks star 
this next star, it was his 21 points that proved to be more valuable. Carmelo Anthony? <laughs> no! Oh. <laughs> Stefan Marbury. Star. Uh, <laughs> dang it. Over three so far. Uh, uh, I don't know if this fourth question is going to help. <laughs> question number four. Carmelo Anthony was on Denver, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, in 07. Yes, he was. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Question number four. Authorities in Galveston, Texas are flipping out because of the abnormally high number of deaths. About 180 of this of these majestic animals washing up on the shores of the Gulf of Mexico. Dolphins. Hey, there you go. I forgot you're a death guy. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, one for four. <laughs> Big death guy. <laughs> Big death guy. God for life. <laughs> death anniversary of a bunch of dolphins. <laughs> C- come on, Peter, at me. <laughs> I didn't kill him. <laughs> kill him. Right. Chance to tie this thing up. Question number five. It may still have been cold in his hometown of Washington Heights in New York City for, uh, for the rapper Mims. But his song was celebrating its second week as the hottest song on Billboard's Hot 100. Mims. That sounds so familiar. I had no idea who he was. I knew the song, but did not know that that was his name. It's not Laffy Taffy, is it? It may have still been a cold day in his hometown, but it's celebrating its second week as the hottest song on Billboard's Hot 100. <laughs> Can you stick it with Laffy Taffy? <laughs> hot. Was it that hot, Lil hot. John? No, I don't know. Shake your Laffy Taffy. Um, no, that was like Snoop Dogg. No, nope. none of those. I, I don't know. Uh, fine. <laughs> it is. This is why I'm hot. Ooh, good song, good song. <laughs> Not really. Uh, D for L saying. This is why I'm hot. He's only 36. <laughs> shout Already out to Mims. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Mims. <laughs> He'll be headlining Coachella. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, what, one <laughs> for four. <laughs> Better than none. Um, hey, yeah, I'm uh, right behind you. They're gonna, you're going to get some hard questions next week. <laughs> damn it. All right, uh... Well, that's going to be it for the episode, but before we let the good people go about their weekend, give them some recommendations. Uh, this week, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm, no, I'm going to give some recommendations for as you get older, sometimes your back will seize up once in a while. It's so I'm recommending nice. ibuprofen or Icy Hot <laughs> and both. Might as well do that. So sometimes you need a little... Uh, and a histamine or something in your body. <laughs> Don't get old, kids. No, it's painful. I agree. <laughs> um, wow, interesting. Um, I'm going uh, through some things right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I saw during the text. Uh, find that out in our other podcast, <laughs> Growing Old with Sam. <laughs> um, and I am going, you know, I'm going to stay on brand and recommend our Monday edition of the podcast. Our live reactions to CS the Key, the hottest podcast about CS the Key out there right now. Join the conversation, Sam. Let them know how they do that for both CS the Key, uh, the hills, and even Laguna Beach. Hey, if you type in the Googler machine, Come and Clean Pod, you'll find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Check out our website at comeandcleanpod.xyz. If you want to support us at Patreon and be the first to do so at patreon.com backslash come and clean pod. Email us at coming.clean.pod at gmail.com with any suggestions, hate mail, fan mail, anything. We Mail's like mail. mail. They count the same. So we'll do the checks. Boom. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. All those help. Grab some merch. Rock a t-shirt with us at www.teespring.com backslash stores backslash coming clean pod. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends about the podcast, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. 
get with it. We will respond. Yes. Uh, and as always, a big thank you to Radical Something for our theme song, Kelly. Get down. Always remember, what do the good people have to do? Always rep the rad. Worldwide peace. <laughs>